Hello everyone, it's Julie from Camellia Crafts Designs. I'm here with a lovely, super easy project for this bank holiday weekend for you. And I've made these cute little expanding folders, or as we call these in the UK, document wallets, and these are mini ones, yeah? This is what a document wallet looks like if you're not in the UK and you don't know what I mean. In fact, we often call them file folders, which then causes confusion as this is not what is called a file folder in many other countries. So yeah, it just expands at the bottom. It's just a little pocket. Well, this is not a little one, is it? It's a big one. Yeah, they're big enough to fit in fool's cap paper, A4 letter paper. This one is a cute little mini dinky-doo thing. And it measures, when it's folded flat like this, six inches by four and a quarter but if you were to expand it like so and expand the bottom let's do it I've not actually had this one expanded yet there we go it would need something in it to keep it fully expanded it would actually then measure four inches six by four so that's a lovely size I think that would fit a US A2 size card and UK 4x6 one if it were just trimmed down. In fact, it probably would fit with these sides expanding. You can use it to hold your ephemera. You could make a series of these like I've done and pop them in a little box to store ephemera. You could use them in journals as pockets. Might even be a nice thing to have on the front of a journal. You could have it opening sideways. There's endless ways you can use this. And I'll show you this easy way I've come up with to make them. And it's a foolproof way, I think, because lately I have not got a head for figures. I've not got a head for the numbers and remembering them. And this one I can remember. Now, you can also make it with one of these Tim Holtz backdrops. They are the exact size. That's not an accident. I made them. <laughs> I made them that way. This is 10 inch by 6 inch. These are the new papers by Tim Holtz that have replaced the 12 by 12 sheets. But if you don't have these and you do just have 12 by 12 sheets, you can still make them out of those. Because I think you'll recognise a couple of these. I think that was that the one full 12 by 12 sheet I've used. Yeah, I've made two from a 12 by 12 sheet. And you also have enough paper then to make your little expanding bits for the side. If you're using these, you're going to have to use your scraps. But... We're not short of scraps, are we? No one, I don't think, is short of scraps. Even if you're brand new, go, go, and, go and find a piece of paper lying around the house. <laughs> You'll find something. So, I'll show you the quick, easy way to make the first one. I'm just going to choose one of these. I mean, it doesn't matter if your paper's single-sided or double-sided that you use. Uh, that one might be a nice one. Oh, that'd be really nice. Oh, that'd be really nice in that green. I'm going to use that one. Now, yes, on the back, if you've used a, used a directional piece of paper, it may be upside down. That, that, yeah, didn't matter what direction that were, does it? It may be upside down. That one, I've chose to have it sideways. I think you get gist. Any paper will work for these. If you're a waffling woman and show them what to do, that's what they're here for. Righty-ho. That sounded very posh, that like tally-ho, didn't it? No, I'm so not posh. Right, so... <laughs> You can even get away with using a small scoreboard for this if you've only got a small one and not a big one. So what I'm going to do, put the paper in the side that you want on your outside, like this. Grab a scorey tool, or whatever you score with, a knife, whatever, your teeth. <laughs> and we're going to score at two and a half inches. I always like to go across twice. Two and three quarters, and then three. Then we're going to turn it around and we're going to do the same again on this end. Two and a half inches. I've even remembered that without looking at my bit of card I've wrote it down on. Two and three quarter inches and then three inches. There you go. So that's it. Your card. I don't know why that says eight by six. I really don't know why that says eight by six. I just don't know. Because <laughs> I think it's ten in it. Check, check. Yeah, it's ten. I ever wrote that down? What did I say about me not having a head for numbers at the minute? I've probably wrote that down as what size of paper you need. And I've done it wrong. Crazy woman. So, we've done that. Here's one I scored earlier. In a lighter colour, so you can see the scores. 
So those scores are in exactly the same place. Two and a half, two and three quarters and three. Same from either end. Even if your bit of card is quite not quite ten inches, it'll still work. I won't go much below about nine. I think that what minimum I put down eight. Well, I don't know. Right, then we're going to fold. So decide which you want on the outside. I've decided the green. So I want, yeah. Yeah, that's going to be right way up. So I'm going to fold it on that bottom one there for the top. That's going to be my top flap coming down. Now on this one, fold it on the centre of the three score lines. I mean, you can fold all three if you want. But I'm making mine as though they're going to be flat until such time as I fill them with something or nothing or I don't know. Then just give those two score lines a nice crease. There we go. Well, I've got that one a bit wonky. So can you see I've just wonked it up a bit? So I'm just going to utch it over and rescore that. There you go. Now it's straight. Now I'm going to get my scissors and on this bottom bit here just to mimic the real document wallet use that, you can see it better woman I'm just going to angle that there so it's just from the score line to the edge and I'm guessing it, I'm not I'm not measuring it we out I'm just snipping a bit off if they don't match up perfectly I'm not going to throw spit my dummy out or <laughs> throw my rattle at it pram and that, that's it I'm going to ink it now so you can see, oh there, if you want to round your corners, round them, I'm going to because it's that old thing of me finding sharp corners offensive. I just find them, it's easier to bash them and bend them, so even if it's only a tiny little rounding you put on it, my washer's beeping like mad, hopefully one of the kids is going to get off the bums and empty it. It is good, my washer. It beeps to say it's done, and then if you've not emptied it, because it it's a bit mad beeping again. It's like beep, 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 beep. Don't forget about me. Beep, beep, beep. I'm full of washing. Yeah, crackers. But when you've got a memory like mine, it's good. And if you don't see it first beep, you learn it second. Oh, look, that's already inked there, but I'm going to put a bit more on. I'm using my Tim Holtz Vintage Photo Distress Oxide. Why am I using Vintage Photo? I don't know. Normally I reach for walnut stain, don't I? This is not quite as dark. And I'm just liking it on this paper. So give that an ink. I'm not missing the inking out because we have now got a gaggle of Phyllis's who love to watch inking. Hello Phyllis. I wish I could remember that lady's name who asked about the expandable pocket. Yeah, one of my subscribers asked if I'd done a video on doing an expandable pocket. And I'm like, not really. I did one on like an expandable envelope with button string closure. This one's just a pocket, no closure. You can add whatever closure you want at whatever time you want to close you, can't you? I've got all edges there, I miss one. There we go. Right, so that is our little wallet. Now, to make these little expanders at the side, because we're using the Tim Holtz piece of paper, I'm going to have to get some scraps. And I've got plenty of scraps hanging about. I've got that, and I think that might match that colour nicely. So I'll tell you the size these need to be. You're probably looking at this thinking, what on earth has that woman been writing down? I don't think that woman knows half the time. Right, this is for your little gussets. Right, for your gussets, take two. Yeah, I've chopped a bit out because I just lost, I lost the plot, people. I lost plot. Right, <laughs> the eagle eyed of you will have noticed. I've made another adjustment on this bit of card. It's like I know in my head what I'm doing and I've completely wrote it down wrong. Right, we're going to make the little gusset pieces here. Yeah, and I'm going to use scraps for this because I use one of my Tim Holtz backdrops. Now we need a piece of card, a very small piece, that measures two and a quarter inches by two inches or two pieces that measure two and a quarter inches by one inch. Yeah, I've totally said that wrong before. Right, I've, I've actually got two there but I don't, I don't like them for... Well, I like that one but I don't like that one. Right, so I have, as if by magic, because I cut it when... I will lose in plot. A piece of card that measures two inches 
by two and a quarter inches. Now lay it on that side and this is going to make both your gussets, both of them. And we're just going to score this at every quarter of an inch. So quarter, then half, then da da da, crack on, keep going until you run out of card. Every quarter of an inch is up to that two inch mark. Then we're going to cut it in half at the centre point because that is going to make both gussets. So just cut up your middle line. Whee. You'll see why we can have a piece, one piece that measures two inches or two that measure one. I find it easier to do that slightly larger piece of card. And like I say, we've all got scraps that big. I'm sure we have. Right, move your scoreboard out of the way, missus. Bring that back in. Now, we're going to have to concertina these. If you... I want that green bit to show at the side, not the white bit. So I'm going to start concertina in with it turned that way, upside down. So I'm going to fold that over, and I'm going to fold that over, and then I'm going to fold that like that. So we've got that W shape. That W shape then is going to be glued in there. So when it's glued, can you see, I'll see the green and the white will be on the inside. Now also, if you want to ink these, I'll show you that once more. So put it upside down to the way you want it. So the bit you want showing wants to be down to your work surface. Go that way, turn it, and that way, turn it, and that way. There we go. Now if you want these to be very, very flat, give him a bone fold. Oh, <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> they're like little tiddlywinks again. I love playing tiddlywinks when I craft. That's that, and that's that. There we go. Then I'm going to just give him a little ink on the uh, pointy, pointy sides. Ink your boing, pointy bits. Wee, pointy bits. I'm not going to ink that middle one. I just really can't be bothered. That's just too much, too much like hard work, isn't it? You, no one's going to notice that's not inked. And that's if you're inking, of course. You don't have to ink any of these pieces. And I'm also going to ink those end bits. I'm going to ink them both. Because we don't want to see any white bits. No, we don't. It's like an all-over tan, isn't it, when we're doing this inking? No white bits. It says me, I've never had an all-over tan. I don't do tanning. I'm too pale and interesting. Right, I'm going to get me glue. And... Use any glue you want. Bog standard tacky glue, PVA glue will work. The only reason I use tiny bottles is because I'm a very heavy handed person. So I won't be using that because I'll make an awful mess. Now I'm going to go for my Barely Arts. I don't have any regular PVA in a little bottle. The art glitter dries far too quick. And if you don't get your little piece in the right place, you won't have enough time to wiggle. How do I know this? Because it happened to me and I had to peel it off and do it again when I was doing my prototype. So I'm going to use the Barely Arts glue. Gives you a bit more wiggle time, but glues just as well. Right, so take your folder and I'm going to glue that to there firstly. Yeah. So I'm going to cover one edge in glue. I don't tend to go right up to the edge, me, because when you press it, it's going to squidge out a little bit. Got to allow for the squidgeage. With squidgeage, I can't say that, so I don't know why I keep trying. Right, now I'm going to turn this sideways to make life easier. Line that up with the top there. We want a gap at the bottom. Why am I doing it this way? I can't see. I just can't see, can I? So I've turned the com project completely upside down now. That allows you to see and me to see. Whee. Now I'm going to... I just check it's level with my fingers like that. Whee. I don't know why there were we involved there because I weren't doing anything that involved movement. While that dries, I'm going to glue this one on. You're just going to make sure you get these the correct way around when you glue them on. So... I've got the middle point there pointing in, yeah? That's that. <laughs> I'm going to turn it round. Whee! Why that involves a wee, I cannot tell you. It's not really a wee situation, is it? 
there you go then I like to let that one glue completely and yet yeah, nice and firmly before I even think about gluing that bit to that because if that's not glued completely and it's still wibbling about and then you've got that wibbling about it's just going to be a wibbly disaster wibbly wobbly no now this barely arts glue I'm hoping should be dry by now I'm going to try and pull it off yeah there you go that's dry don't let the angry baboons try pulling it off because they probably will succeed whether it's dry or not you know what them baboons are like so put a bit of glue on that. I like to do them both at the same time. There's also why I like to bone fold them bits. I'm sorry if this has taken a long time. Again, I know the lady who asked me about this is a beginner. And if you are a beginner, it's just good to go slow in it. Slow and steady wins the race, doesn't it? We're not going to get any brownie points for getting this project finished quick. I mean, you can see that I didn't glue it perfectly. It's sticking out a bit, but hey-ho. It's a junk journal we're making. Yeah, yeah it's, I can live with that. Back in the day, I'd have been like, must take that off and do it again. Now I'm like, meh. I'm just going to put a bit more ink on it. There you go. Sorted. I'm still quite like that. I'm going to give these two another bone fold. And that. So, if you are using that in a journal and you want it completely flat, that is pretty flat. Yeah, we've got the layers of card there, but there we go. Now, before you s try and expand that, let your glue dry. So that is exactly how we did it. Now I'm going to do another one. This time I'm going to use a 12 by 12 sheet and cut it in half. And then we'll decorate a few, yeah? This would be an ideal mass make for anyone who could shut up and go on with it. Yeah? <laughs> That's not always my forte, shutting up and getting on with it. I've got a few tangled in my wires. I've got a few sheets. These are actually, I took two of my favourite sheets. Oh, I haven't used that one. I'm going to use this sheet. Yeah, just one sheet. Yeah, not happy we are. They came out to pack it again, Mr. Holtz. These, look at that. Shocking, shocking. Yeah, too much glue had been put on top and it had seeped in and... Oh. But for this project, it'll work. But I've used that one. I want to use that one. Right, so I'm going to cut this in half. Before I cut, in, cut it in half, I'm going to decide how I want this to look. Now, I'm very tempted to cut this one in half sideways. Oh, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> no, no. I think I'll cut this one in half. Just straight down middle, yeah. Do it straight down middle, woman. Make your life easy. Put your pin in your glue. Then with a bit of luck, when you come to use it again, it's going to work. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, and I, I know it's been, again, it's been over a week since I did a video again, hasn't it? It's been, if you're in the UK, you'll know it's been GCSE results week this week. Oh. And I've got twins, haven't I? Yeah, so it's been, yeah, double GCSE results week, so... Yeah, we've had stressed out kids before the results, stressed out kids after the results. And yeah, you just haven't been time for crafting. Right, I'm going to cut this in half at six inches directly down the middle. There we go. So now we've got two pieces that measure six inches by 12. Now to get it to the same, I mean, if you wanted a much deeper wallet, you do it like this. In fact, I might do that with one. Let's make a deeper one see what occurs but if you want it to be the exact same size as the one I made with the backdrops you need to cut a two inch piece from the top or the bottom now I can't decide which I want to cut it off I think I'm going to cut it off the top yeah cut it off the top woman a two inch piece right so move that right to end I do love this new trimmer so much easier than that other one I had. And it makes me keep my desk tidy so I can fit it on. Whee. But I'm, I'm, I won't poo poo my old trimmer. I had that trimmer, must be over 10 years. I always judge it by when kids went to school full time, they were just, they were three year old just before they were four. That's when I started getting back into crafting again. Right, anyway, that's. I digress once again. Well, it's bitter cut off, is that it? I've lost it. Where on earth could I have lost that in space of three seconds flat? 
but we're talking me i can lose anything in super quick time can't i oh you numpty woman where's it gone i'm gonna find it two ticks i found it i've no idea what i did there see how to how to lose a piece of paper in three milliseconds right there it is so put that to one side for now because we're going to try and make a bigger one aren't we that's the one I'm going to make it with and that's the bit I've got cut off that you can make your little gussets with and you'll still have a little bit left you can even put a pocket out front you could do all sorts I'm just doing what I'm doing right I'll grab my scoreboard so I've decided I'm going to have that as the bottom flap there so I think yeah we'll just see a bit of that label on bottom that'll be good rest will be on back and that's going to be the top flap not that side yeah but because of the way we score this you could just change your mind after scoring so we're going to score again at two and a half i'm going to do it once two and three quarter and three i go mad with scoring sometimes and score it twice even when i don't need to turn it completely around and score again at two and a half two and three quarter and three so you see what I mean about you can decide afterwards which is going to be a top flap. You could see what you've got after you've scored it. I still want that as my top flap because I want my numbers on my tape measure to be right way up on front. So for top, we're going to score on the top fold. Yeah, the others are there for when you want to expand your file by a quarter or half an inch. And then this one, we're going to fold it on the centre score line. Don't matter if you get it wrong, you can score it again. I just don't bother scoring me others until such time as I want to expand my wallet. Which may happen sometime or never. We just don't know, do we? So, scorey, scorey. The good firm crease just helps it stay lovely and flat. And scorey, scorey. There we go. So what we've got there... I really like the front of that. I like that we've got that label. I love that. So when I come to decorate that, if I do, I'll just probably be decorating that bit. I don't go mad decorating when the paper's so yummy. Right, so what next? We'll round the corners. So I'm just going through this again for anyone who... I'll go a bit quicker this time as well. Round the corners. And I'm going to cut that little bottom corner off. Just... If you want to make yourself a template for doing this, you can do so. But I'm just guesstimating it. We're going to do some much faster inking, Phyllis. There we go. Yeah, I've got a new sponge for this um, vintage photo ink as well. So I'm having to dip it in a lot more often because the sponge is not as soaked as my other one is that I use for the walnut stain. Wee. Inky, inky, parley-boo. I don't even know what that song is. Maybe I've got words wrong. Don't really know. I love watching videos on YouTube for, you know, <laughs> you know, songs where people have classically got the words wrong. And yeah, some of them are really funny. Really funny. Although I cannot bring one to mind at the moment. Some of them are a little bit uh, risky, shall we say. Rude. And I don't swear on my channel. And that's not to, not to say that you won't find me at home swearing when things go wrong. But I, <laughs> I used to have a very favourite swear word. I s defined, well I do. I swear much less now I've got children. And it were brought home to me that I was swear, still swearing too much when mine were young and the, one of them dropped something on the floor and came out with a perla. My favourite swear word when something goes wrong. I'm like, oh my word, where have they got that from? Yeah, stop kidding you, send woman. They've got it from you because that is exactly what you say when you drop something on the floor or when something goes wrong. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in my younger days I used to swear like a trooper I had a job where I was in charge of like 14, 16 rough and ready engineers from Yorkshire and sometimes 
with blokes like that, if you don't swear at them, you're not going to get the result you want, are you? They're not going to listen to you. But no, we don't do it now, do we, Deidre? No, not at all. <laughs> oh, oh, I've got a cup of tea arriving. Thank you, darling. Brilliant. Oh, just put that there. Don't scald yourself, woman. Keep it out your way, don't knock it over. There we go. Right, so that's that done. We're now going to do the gussets. And I'm going to do the gussets out of this piece. So I want to get me a bit of paper again. One piece that's two and a quarter by two, which I'm going to do because that's long enough. So get the baby trimmer out. So we know that's two inches wide, so we're going to do one that's two inches, two and a quarter inches long. There we go. And then I'm going to put it, I'm going to score the short side at top, long side down side, and score it every quarter of an inch. So yeah, there you have. You've got a history of whether or not Julie swears and in what situation. <laughs> oh dear. It used to crack me up sometimes, you know, when I worked at school as a dinner lady and went in helping. And look sometimes on other adults' faces if a child swore, it's like, oh no, the world, no, the world's not ending. We know where they've probably got it from. And I think it's as much of a wake-up call for adults as children. Right, where's your scissors gone? You've tied it up, you've lost your scissors. Tell you what, oh, they're, they're there. Could they have been any nearer? Now I'm going to cut this in half again into two one inch strips and then we're going to put the side we want showing here face down then we're going to do our little concertina folding so like so forward and back if you've ever made um, mini albums it's very similar to how you make the spines do well, one method of making spines do do. I'm going to come in and bone fold them so they'll stay nice and flat until such time as we want to expand. My stomach did that. <laughs> uh, missed boat on that one. Right, and I'm going to ink my pointy bits, my doubled up bits. And I'm just going to come in and ink those edges. So we don't see those white bits, inky pointy bits, and your white bits. There we go. Then I'm going to grab my Barely Arts glue again, and I will just ink up one of the edges. We remember we want that centre pointy bit pointing inside to make sure that we're doing this correctly so that it's going to expand properly if you put it on the other way it will still work but you won't be able to get as much in your pocket your in inner dimensions your pocket will be a little bit smaller there we go then we're going to do this other side I think I'm doing a much better job of staying in camera now we with my new mat, my new phone, my new light. Ooh. Yeah, thank you again to everyone who has so kindly bought me coffees recently. That is what I used to buy. The new mat and the new light and the new phone, which was much needed. My old one was starting to overheat and it didn't seem to want to let me do anything unless memory were really, really empty. It wanted me to have more memory available to do something than it needed. I think it were getting old. I think I need more memory available than what I need to do some of these days. Yeah, I'm like an old phone. So they are now glued. I'm going to say because it's barely arts, they're glued already. If you're using, say, a regular PVA or something that takes longer to dry, make sure it's dried before you do this second bit. That's that. And that's that. Wee. I mean, you could make, in fact, I've done it, you could mass make the actual wallets and put the expander bits on as and when. You don't even need to put expander bits on. You could just glue the edges. You could sew all the way around them. That'd be nice. Yeah, you 
could. You really could. I just think this method is a lot less cutting, a lot less measuring, I hope. And there, we've got that. So we've got that one done. That's my one I already decorated. We've got that one to decorate. And this is one I decorated in a completely different style. I've used little Tim Holtz bits and bobs. These, I'll tell you which bits I used on this. Well, that, no, that weren't that one. That weren't that one. That was, yeah, layers organic, yeah. With These are the slightly shiny ones. And then I put a Tim Holtz word on. Why did I use the word stay strong? I'll show you. Because that was one that fell out first. <laughs> these are the really thick chipboard ones. And what I did there is I just, in fact, that's what's left. I peeled that word off the front because these are really thick ones, ideal for covers and outside of things or other mixed media projects but a little bit too chompy for scrapbooking and journaling but you get the profile a lot thinner if you just peel it, peel it. So that's that one and this one I decorated with the palette, yeah, Tim Holtz Ephemera Pack palette, yeah. And these are not shiny, these are the more matte ones. I think these are my favourite, but I do like them both. I used to be very anti anything that was shiny, but I have come around to the fact that, yeah, a little bit shy is good now and again. Right, so that's the ones I've decorated, and we're going to decorate these two together. But first, I'm going to see about making a slightly bigger one. Right, I'm going to grab that piece of card that I had, I mean, you could you could probably make this a big, huge one out of a full 12 by 12 sheet. It's something you can adapt the measurements for and make it any size. But this one, I'm going to use the same... If I use the same scoring measurements, will it work? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Because will that flap still? No, I don't know if that flap will meet because... I don't know. I'm going, to, I'm going to score it different, so let's make this one up as we go along. Normally I've started scoring at two and a half, haven't I? I'm going to start this score at two and three quarter. So I'm going to score two and three quarter, three and three and a quarter, yeah? I like to do it the same at both sides because it makes my life easy. And who wouldn't love an easy life? I certainly do. So two and three quarter, three and three and a quarter again now we'll see we'll see if it works it might it might go horribly wrong if it does we'll make another yeah so this what's going to be top i want that as my bottom flap and that as my top so i'm going to fold at the top one there and here at the bottom i'm going to fold on that middle one. Oh, it's only just fit it only just reaches so if I'd not altered where I scored it, our flaps would not have met there. Would have had dodgy flaps. Oh, has that made a square one? Let's measure it, see what occurred. Five and... I can't work it out, where is it? Five and five eighths by six. It's near as damn it square, but not quite square. But I like it. And can you see that does still... Yeah, meet... Will it meet if we expand it? I don't know. So I'm just going to fold that. I'm going to fold these others. No. If we expand the wallet, those two are not going to meet. So that is not a good idea. <laughs> that didn't work, woman, did it? Didn't work. Hmm. So maybe if he started scoring at three inches. Yeah, if he scored at three inches. I want to cut another piece of card in half now and try it. We're in full experimental mode now. Craft lunches are occurring left, right and centre. I'm going to cut that one that way. I'm going to measure this against bottom of my board because that's the one with the dodgy top. So we'll perhaps use that side. Score there at, uh, cut there at six. We'll not use that dodgy bit. We'll use this piece. Right. There's probably some mathematical formula for working this out. But, right. This time I'm confident it will work. So we're going to score at three. Three and a quarter. 
and three and a half. I don't think it's going to give that much bigger a pocket really. We're going to score again at three, three and a quarter and three and a half. I'll put these measurements up on the screen. That's going to be my front flap so fold it on the top score line and fold this one on the centre score line. That Yeah, we've got much more of an overlap there. Yeah. I do actually, I like that size much better though. I really do. Now let's just fold these to see whether the flaps would meet if we expanded the wallet. I think they will. Yeah, they do. Yeah, so if, can you see... If the wallet was expanded to its full half centimetre width, half inch width, the flaps would still meet, yeah. But um, that size does not please me as much as that size. That size I like much better. We just discovered something new there together, didn't we? And we didn't like much. I didn't like it. Don't know about you. You might have liked it. You might want a wallet that size. Right, I'm going to decorate these two. That one... I don't think that's going to need a lot of decorating at all. I really like how that is. I think I may just put one or two extra labels on it just to add a pop of colour. So let's do that one first. And I'm going to decorate this with the that one palette this is called. This pack seems to just have lots and lots of little bits that have been in Tim Holtz sets before. I don't know if that's true because I don't always watch Tim's live streams and things. I watch some of them but they get a bit long for my short attention span. Right so what we've got, oh I like that. Nice bit of red. Oh we've got the, uh, I'm just picking it randomly it's not I think I might want to, I don't think the purple and the red goes together good, but I think the blue might do. We could put a bank of blue stamps on that. And a part avion, part avion. To me, that's it, that's done. I don't need to do anything else with that. In fact, I think that might take away from that. I'm going to cut one of those stamps, or maybe two. We'll cut them wiggly like the other edges are cut. There we go, I like that. Yeah, I like that better. So I'm going to age this up with a bit of ink. If you watch uh, Marley Design, she ages her tickets up lovely by dipping them in ink. But I don't have the foresight for that. <laughs> to do it early and on and let it dry. I'm like, oh yeah, I could have done that. But I'm doing my video now so I won't. You can dry it with your heat gun, but that's just one more tool on my desk to get in my way. Are that upside down? Yeah. Yeah, I think I just want that there. Ooh. Right, I've just realised now I don't want to decorate up past that first crease, so it's still going to cover a little bit. It's going to cover a teeny tiny bit of that stamped bit up, but not too much. I can live with that. I can live with that. We were covering far too much of that lovely stamp up before. And I think what I might then do is put one of these numbers on the top. And I'm just going to cut this down and make it a bit smaller so that it will fit. And I did this on one of others when I decorated it. I've done that about as one kit as a donkey's leg. Yeah. So it will fit there. Just between the two score lines so if we do expand this wallet that will be on the top edge I hope you know what I mean there sometimes when I don't know what I mean it's very hard to convey it to you <laughs> right that's still not straight but straight enough yeah and I think I just want that up there I'm gonna let it go over that line yeah I'm happy with that and now we want that pop of colour so now I may put that pop of colour down here or I might, shall I be really really whoa that's not like me is it to put some at Katie cornered I'm gonna do it I'm gonna do it I'm gonna put it on wonky 
I'm just thinking about when you go to post office. These are the stickers they put on when something's going by airmail. And if you've not already put your own on at post office, they just slap them on anyway, don't they? Sometimes I think, oh, could have straightened that up, made it a bit neater. Whee. So, you know what? Yeah, that's what they do. They slap it on and there we go. So we've got stamps on. So we've turned this document wallet into an envelope, really. I'm guessing that's going to be the address it's going to. We've got another number there. We've got the Par Avion and the stamps. Now, that's done. I'm not doing anything else to that because I like all the other text that's already on it. Yeah, so there you go. You're done. Now, this one, I think I want to do something like I did on that one a little cluster affair and that is exactly how I did it again I've been watching Marley's because she does lovely she does brilliant little clusters with all the Tim Holtz bits and I, I couldn't decide what to decorate it with so I made that little cluster I then noticed that that label was for a florist and I thought "Ooh, stick a flower behind it then flowers are fragile, <laughs> fragile handle with care. I know there doesn't have to be a meaning to a lot of these labels, but sometimes I want my labels to be tell a little story. So, yeah. A large, is that, does, that's a, a lang florist, or a large florist. I haven't got a clue. But we're, we're having a large florist called Smith and Path and Loeb, whoever they are. Yeah. And this is the customs declaration I've decided that they've filled in. And... Handle it with care because it contains flowers. Yeah, it's a file folder, not a box of flowers, but who said my story had to make sense? Right, I'm going to make a little cluster for this one now. That, I'm drawn to that. I just am because the colours look so nice. I know that I'm then going to cover it up with the things, but as long as I've got some showing, I could tear part of it off and use it for another project. So I'm thinking I'm going to go with that. I don't think I want butterflies or flowers on this. So let's see what we've got. That's one of my tickets that, that just fell in. I don't think I want purple. That is a contender. I'm not going to go through the whole set of cards, but if you've never seen this set, it's a chance for you to have a little looky look. There's all sorts of bits in. I like that. Not that. I mean, you could make these to hold these bits of ephemera. Not the teeny ones, because they might fall out of them little gaps at the bottom. Oh, I do like that, but unless I'm going to decorate this for sideways, which I could. Oh, that does look nice, though, doesn't it? But no, I want mine landscape ways. So you'll decorate something else, mate. Da -da -da -da. I seem to be going for all yellows, don't I? So let's just get a load of yellows out. I like that muted red. That looks good. Bit of green might be nice. And th this is how I do it. I'll pick out the ones I think might go when I want to put lots of decoration on and just get a little pile of them. Hmm. No, that's too big and in your face. No, too white. I could ink it, but... No, no, no. Ooh, I like that one. Hmm, no. Change my mind on that one. Ooh, I've got half a mushroom here. There we go. Yes, I've been listening to your Marley's. I have been keeping my half tickets. <laughs> yeah, don't throw them away. I seem to like these with numbers on. That's good. I like that red. We've got some of these little circular ones. Hmm. I like that. Right, so yeah. I didn't hear I think, that. Well, you Please didn't. Try that again. You didn't need to hear, did you? Because you are not crafting, are you? Last time I checked, you don't have opposable thumbs, Gertrude. So crafting is not your forte. Oh, I like that. Little frame. But I think I need a photograph in that. Right, so I'm going to make my little cluster from those that I've got out. So I'll put them back to one side. Right, so I want a cluster to fill that area. I also then want something to put there. I th I'm thinking maybe that red one. So, yeah, I'm thinking that red one's going to go there. And I want a little cluster using this bingo card as a base to put on there. Yeah, I may even stamp a number on there. 
Oh, I've got some rub-ons now. I've got some rub-ons. I'm getting fancy. Could put a rub-on on. Right, so I don't want again this cluster to come up past that line. So do you know what? I am going to I'm gonna tear this bingo card in half. <gasps> ooh, ooh, ooh. Because then I can use the other half for something else. Oh, it gives me chills that. <laughs> Tearing it. Oh, what's she doing? So, do, do. Oh, for anyone who's asked about my mat and where I got it from, I have added it to my Amazon storefront now. When I first got it, I wasn't sure because it's not as smooth and slippy as my last one. And I did struggle at first to pick things up, but now I've got the hang of it. I like it better because things aren't sliding away. They're staying put. I'm really liking it. Right, I want a greeny bluey one. Is that too bluey when I want greeny? I don't know. I don't know. I could have the torn bit showing. No, I want it like that. So I'm going to ink these edges. And then I've just had an idea to get the look that I liked from Marley's stuff. I'm going to grab my stencil. I've got it here from using it. Ooh, I'm going to do that. I'm just going to stencil some splats. I mean, I could get splats out, but then I'd have, like I've already explained, I'd have to wait for them to dry. This is not the best. Oh, get your brush, woman. Get your brush. Here, use your smaller one. Get some ink on it and stop faffing about with that. Because it didn't work, did it? Oh, there we go. Maybe I got that darker than I wanted. But I like it. And we'll have a few there. There we go. Yeah, looks like it's got a rash. <laughs> so... I like it better now though. Is that upside down? Oh, mine eyes are old and cranky. Now I'm just going to glue that to that. I'm not going to put loads of glue on because I might want to tuck something else up behind it. I don't know yet. And I'm going to use that line to line it up that's on the bingo card. I've gone a bit mad with amount of glue. I'm going to swap from my Bailey Arts to my Art Glitter, I think, because it glues more instantly. There we go. So I've just got two pieces stuck together. That is going to fit nicely. So I don't want anything else coming below that or above that. So I want to add things onto the side. Yeah, I like this. I really like that. That's the Baltimore Steam Packet. I don't even know what that means. I don't know what that means but I like it and I'm going to stick the whole thing on and I don't think I'm going to put any ageing on I'm not sure that worked too well I don't think it was the best idea I've had in a while if you don't try you don't know do you I didn't want it to come you know, it can overhang that bottom bit can't it really it can um, now I'm going to cover a lot of that blue up I don't want too much blue and I'm going to go a little bit higher up just under the numbers there yeah so I like that bit showing I like that yeah so I could have tossed some of that off and used it on something else it's only a slight waste though yeah I like where that's going that's looking good and I want something down here I'm going to stick this bit on that I want here first. I'll just ink it and then I'll have a look see what wants to go in this area to match this. I mean I know when Marley made these clusters I've mentioned them a few times because I think they're such a good idea. She did, She made them and just um, pinned them into a journal with paper clips which again is a brilliant idea but I love to decorate things with clusters I find it easier to just put a cluster on an area. Normally I've got the clusters made, but I'm making them this time to fit that particular size. I do like that. She says, oh, I've ripped it. I've ripped it. I think I really want to put that there. I 
just want a bit of that showing, but I don't know where. Maybe that. Yeah. And then I could put a number or something along the bottom to fill that little gap. Yeah, I'm going to have that sticking out there. Like that. Yeah. And then I'm going to put a number across that bit where it's torn. Yeah. So ink those edges. I just know I wanted a bit of pink or red. And I'm going to glue right up to the last quarter inch-ish. And I'm going to pop that there. Why have you you've clued it all wrong, you daft woman? Wipe it off. Wipe it off. We're probably. Oh, I like the stain that that glue's left. See, happy accident. That glue's left me a lovely stain. And to make sure it don't go shiny, look what I've got here. There we go. It's my um, yeah powder that I used before embossing. Anti-static powder. It's baby powder, to be quite honest. And then I want to put something on. Yeah, I want that there. Yeah, so we can still see the number. We can still see it says Baltimore Steam Packet. I think actually I'm going to cut a little bit off that bottom. A little bit more off that side. I'm getting very brave just chopping things off with scissors, aren't I, instead of measuring them and getting my trimmer. There we go. Yeah, I like that there. So we can glue everything apart from that last little bit. Whee. There we go. That plain bit there, I could put a rub on it, I suppose. going to come over a little bit there we go I'm just going to put a bit of ink there you know where though that torn bit I like it so oh yeah so I've got exactly the look I was going for may have been by look rather than judgment that I'm going to put a number on or something so now I'm going to pop that on Wee quite a new thing for me ripping stuff up and making clusters it was a bit of a light bulb moment when I saw that video which I will link because I've gone on about it loads haven't I I think it was one where she was making something to go in a journal she made for Corey Darman who is creating with scraps who is another fabulous creator and youtuber right oh I quite like that yeah and that, I think I want to put a rub on on it. Find your rub ons, missus. Here we go. I've got specimen. That's it. I, do, I think I've got another one somewhere, but I'm not going to search forever. Let's take these out. I just want something there. Again, a little tip I've picked up from Marley about just using... Oh, there's two sheets in there. I like that. Again, these were got for me in Happy Mail. Yeah. So what do I want to put there? That's 785 again. I use that all all time. I don't want bugs. I like the word observation. I think I'm gonna use that. And yeah, I'm gonna I don't know whether you're supposed to cut these out like this, but I'm conscious when they're just normal rub-ons, things tend to stick when they didn't ought to. So I'm gonna cut out the one I want. Oops like so and I'm going to put it above the crease line oh yeah I'm going to try rubbing it with my bone fold to see what occurs I'm conscious I'm rubbing onto two layers I've never used Tim Holtz remnant rubs before and I don't know how well they stick get your pointier bone folder woman you had it on the desk earlier here we go my desk's got uh, yeah it's not as untidy as usual. Oh, I 
think because that's come off now it's done oh i like that it just makes that yeah i like it i now want to put one up there somewhere i really do what we're going to put uh, da -da -da -da. lost and found oh there's lost and found a lot isn't there I think we're going to have to put lost and found. Yeah. Field notes, evidence, Kira. Why do I pick one that's right in the middle? Doo, doo, doo. We've got a lost and found that's near it edge. No, I'll use that one. I'll use that one. Okay. We're going to have to cut specimen off as well. Or we're going to have to get in with a scalpel and perform surgery to get it out. Which is not occurring. So we've got lost and found. I think, do I want it middle? Yeah, I think I want it middle. Maybe I'm going, maybe it doesn't need to be there, but now I've enjoyed using that one rub on, I need to use another. Come on, come off it back in. Other one came off dead easy. That's better. I like how these are not quite perfect as well. I'm gonna pop it, pop it there. Between the two, yeah. I like how you can audition it as well. Will it peel off without rubbing on? Yeah. So I auditioned that. It passed the audition, and now, hang on. That's it. Now it's gonna get rubbed on. Yeah, my pointy bone folder works much better. I don't know if they are the ones that some brands come with a lollipop stick for doing your rubbing on, which are quite good. Is that? Is it stuck? I don't know. Maybe I'm just being a bit tentative with these. Everything's no, it's not all stuck. There we go. Yeah, it goes more. There we go. got rid of plastic oh I like it I'm happy with that now I'm gonna stop although I've got this around 50 cents oh look at look at it it's got to go on hasn't it it's got to get a bit of ink stick it on I just thought we need more red up there that were on my desk and it's happening and it's gonna cross over all them pieces Oh, that 50 cent just finished it off, so I'm happy with that. Right, what have we done then today? We've made a few folders. We've done a lot of waffling. I just love them. I absolutely love them. That one, much plainer, but I think that's all it needed. And then that is one that I did before as well. So, there we have them. And if you do want to do it as a mass make and not decorate them and put the uh, sides in, that's. I just went ahead and did quite a few from the oh, look at that inside I love it it was very difficult to know which to use inside and out on that I made these with the backdrops and I made some of them with the 12 by 12s that's a backdrop that will probably get used in a journal on a side pocket like so so I could open it because that flower is beautiful right I really hope you enjoyed that thank you to everyone who's been commenting I'm aware again I'm very behind with comments but my kids have needed a lot of attention and they have to come first you are second to my kids I'm afraid but hey help that's life isn't it yeah we've all got real lives away from YouTube yeah it's my job yeah it's yeah it's what earns me money but it, sometimes you've got to take time away from that aren't you for your kids so thank you very much for watching and I'll see you. Have a lovely bank holiday and I'll see you next time. Bye.